Hello and welcome to a constructed video on MTG Arena. So, before we get into today's deck, I have a confession to make. This deck is not incredible. It's, but the thing is, it's not as bad as it looks, and that's what's important. So this is my attempt to push the self-mill theme in the new Ravnica set as far as it'll go. So I'm playing four Narcomoeba and four Creeping Chill in the hopes of milling these cards and getting value off of them in doing so. Also four Blood Operative, but this card is just like actually good and so it's not as gimmicky as the other two. So as you can probably figure out, the theme of this deck is to mill itself, put a lot of cards in the graveyard, generate value that way, and then try to leverage that value into doing other things. So for instance, a 1-1 flyer is not a huge payoff if you mill it into the graveyard, but Vraska turns that into an entire card. Creeping Chill is obviously a terrible card in general. Like, 6 life swing is cool, but it doesn't matter if it can't impact the board, unless I'm dealing damage to myself so I can use the life, and I'm pressuring my opponent with all of my small creatures. So it can add up. And there's not really a whole lot else to say. I'm hoping to get a few wins out of this, and mostly just have fun playing it, because this deck is a blast. Okay, getting into the first match. Against Bro Star. This opening hand is not that bad. Narcomoeba is pretty awful, honestly, but Stitcher's Supplier is your best enabler. Notion Raid is card advantage and an enabler, and Vraska can leverage these and turn them into real cards. So this is pretty good. We're on the play, so I just get to lead with the Supplier. Okay. We didn't hit anything. This deck can have some pretty busted openings, like if you flip a Narc Amoeba and a Creeping Chill, but it also has a lot where it just does this. We are definitely no Dredge deck, like from Modern or Legacy. Still, we'll see what the opponent can do. This deck does generate a lot of value. The main thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't have like a single game over extremely powerful play. So the first thing I'm going to do here is attack. Low Spore Shaman, obviously a much better play than Narcomoeba, so I'm going to be doing that. Uh, yeah, you don't have any... you're not doing anything really powerful. So if opponent... Uh, I'm going to decline. Don't really need any of those. We did mill a Blood Operative, which is great. It'll be a free card that we can get back with Notion Rain. Johnny's Pride Mate. Uh-oh. That could be rough. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get in with both. Maybe not as supposed to attack with the Stitcher Supplier, just because it, it isn't necessarily generating value if they kill it, but... It does represent value with Vraska. We'll see. Okay. Hopefully milling something good. Again, we are not hitting our value cards, which is unfortunate, but it's gonna happen. Like, there, we only have 12 real hits. Uh, we already have a fourth land, but I don't mind one that doesn't hurt us, so I am actually gonna keep the Drowned Catacomb on top. Okay. Uh... We drew a blood operative, and then I am going to pay three life. So, that Notion Rain drew us three cards. Like, it cost us a lot of life to do so, but it did something, so. Okay. So this guy's a 3-3 now. Oh, huh. opponent holding back. Okay, we are blood operative flooded, but that is fine. Here, I'm actually going to try to stabilize the board a little bit. This Johnny's Pride Mate threatens to get out of control, so we are going to try to keep it down. And I'm not going to attack, I'm going to try to block. If they have a removal spell, whatever, but I would prefer to keep Vraska around. Okay, cool. So here is where we're going to show how Narcomoeba is not the worst thing in the entire world. One thing I like about this deck... Cards like Notion Rain and Blood Operative are very costly in terms of life, and so when I was trying to just play, like, Surveil decks, I kept, uh, I kept accidentally, like, just putting myself too low, and I was getting aggroed out, but in this deck, you don't really have to worry about that, because Vraska and the Creeping Chill and 
attacking and blocking with your blood operatives really does keep you healthy. Again, holding back, now we keep Vasca alive even through a removal spell. That's bad news. That is really bad news. None of our creatures block this thing's cats well at all. Oh boy. We can play this branch walker and try to hit. If we see a non-land on top. Huh. Do we want that card? I don't think we do. I don't think we have time for that. I'm probably going to Vraska plus and not sacrifice anything? Or do I sacrifice this? Huh. Because like Glow Spore Salmon just isn't doing much on this board. I think I'm actually just going to keep as many blockers as possible. Um, zero. Target that. Yeah, I'm just going to plus and not target anything. Go ahead and get her loyalty up high so she can try to control things with her minus three. The probably not going to ult to win the game with this card, but you never know. We have four attackers. Wouldn't be that hard to get one through. Yeah, this is the type of match that... Oh, well, that's a little rough, but that's fine. Uh, Blood Operative, excellent here. Because when this enters, you get free graveyard hate. And so my opponent didn't get to keep any other things in the yard. See what opponent does here. This does not attack very well into our board. Neither does this. Yeah, they have to give up a lot here. And this only gets CMC two or less. And this is a three and a four. So even if we trade off here, they don't really have anything to get back. Yeah, this attack is not incredible for my opponent. Okay, the reason this is taking so long is that when you put cats into play like this, they can be attacking anyone, and so my opponent had to figure out how they were attacking. I'm going to go ahead and let Vraska take one here. Trade here. I've got another Surveil card in my hand, so I can buy these back. Like... My opponent is going to run out of resources if they keep playing like this. Yep. Ooh, now that's a good card. So let's see. How do we want to play this? I kind of want to get a Johnny off the table. So... I'm going to go ahead and blow up this Inspiring Cleric. Do this. If my opponent has an exile removal spell, like an oblivion ring type of effect, playing the Underrealm Lich lets them kill Vraska. I could just play these two, but I don't really want to trade with this cat. It does keep Vraska alive though, and it's pretty hard to lose if I have her. So I think I will just play these. I was thinking the Lich might be better, but opponent's graveyard. Uh, doubt they have a way to reanimate this, but in the off chance they do, I will get rid of it. Yeah, opponent has a lot of cards in hand, but we've got a much better board, and we have a bunch of insane value cards. Okay, that's a really annoying card. Uh, it makes this trade much less attractive. I think I still do it. Hmm. If I'm willing to pay a lot of life, I can trade this off and then buy all three of them back, so... Oh, it's a non-token creature. Yep, I forgot that I was totally safe in how I did that. So, I have a couple options here. I can draw with Vraska and see if I hit anything. I can Notion Rain, buy back the Blood Operatives and start playing them out again. Or I can play this Underrealm Lich. I kind of like getting the Lich down just because it's likely to start hitting Narc Amoebas and Creeping Chills, which is kind of what I want to be doing. Uh, I don't think it hurts to do this first, so... Can go ahead and sacrifice the Narc Amoeba, hit a real card. Okay. Uh, that was not an amazing draw. I think I am going to start getting the board into my favor again. I am going to attack with my Glow Spore Shaman. See if opponent wants to trade here. This would be really aggressive. Like, this is going to generate a lot of cards if they leave it around. Yeah, I figured. So, oh, it doesn't matter. Almost all my lands tap for black. Let's see. Hmm. 
I don't think I want either of these, honestly. Er, I'm going to keep the Discovery, just because it has another chance of milling value cards, so... Yep, and here's the part where we pay a ton of life, and I don't mind, because we're drawing a bunch of cards. And our hand is full again, and that's why I think this deck is sweet. Uh, Once Graveyard, get rid of that creature. It's not often that Notion Rain draws five cards, but it's really fun when it does. Opponent, four cards in hand. They'll be able to draw more because of this Midnight Reaper if I start trading off, but just in terms of raw card advantage, it's really hard to keep up with Blood Operatives once they're trading for real creatures. Also Vraska, just drawing cards and killing the creatures. Hmm. Maybe I was supposed to leave that other Vraska on top so that I could sacrifice this one to getting rid of the Midnight Reaper this turn? That's entirely possible. Okay. Sign Enders untapped, so... I mean, I guess there's not a reason to play it now. Six mana up to seven. Hmm. So I could play Discovery, Glowspore Shaman, and a Blood Operative if I wanted. It seems pretty good. I think I might just cash in Vraska on this Midnight Reaper, stop having to worry about that. They get to draw a card, but whatever. Like, it's trading for a Vraska activation. Vraska's already gotten so much value. I'm trying to think if it matters the order I do these in. I don't think so. I guess I'll go ahead and tap this so I don't accidentally run out of black somehow. I could have even used the other part of Discovery to bounce. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And we just gained all that life that we paid back, too. Oh, man. This deck is so awesome. Huh. Instead of these two, I probably just should have played one of my five drops. Okay. Didn't mill anything of value, but that's fine. On its graveyard. Keep eating all their creatures. And I'll go ahead and let them eat one of my things. I still get through for six, and my opponent's life totals start getting to get really precarious because of uh, those creeping chills. Yeah. <laughs> I like where we're at. I don't think I played this turn amazingly. I think I should have, instead of these, played like Doom Whisper or one of these. Okay, that's a kind of annoying card. Opponent's attack is still very bad, though. Okay, again, on 7 mana, that is not enough to do one of these plus a Blood Operative. I think I'll start with a Stitcher's Supplier. Okay, we only have 17 cards in Library, so we need to be a little careful. Attacks? Eh, they're okay. They're not great. Uh, it means I don't have as good of blocks, so I think I'm actually just going to play this and wait. I still love that sound effect. It's kind of scary, but it's awesome. <laughs> See what my opponent does. I'm probably going to Doom Whisper a lot. My health is very high. I can search for something awesome to do. Okay, murder. Uh, yeah. Get rid of those. Let's go ahead and go again. I want to look for something cool to do. In those. Eh, sure. I can go a little more. That creeping chill gave us a lot of life to work with. Yeah. I need to make sure I don't kill myself, so. And I'll go one more. Sure, I'll leave that on top. Okay, that's fine. I think... <laughs> Doom Whisperer generated enough value. <laughs> okay. 1 3 lifelink, sure. Okay, opponent was kind of incentivized to attack there just because each one drains for two. Uh, they're basically just super dead unless they have something really weird, so I'll go ahead and get in there.
And even if they have something weird, I've got a million good cards in hand. Oh, they weren't that dead, but they were dead. Alright, the deck really did its thing game one, which is awesome. Alright, getting into game two against a, another person with an Ajami avatar. Shere Khan. One thing about Arena right now is that since... Okay, this hand... Yeah, it's not incredible, but I'll keep it. It's got some card selection, my card advantage -y card that I want to trade off and is just solid, and my Planeswalker. Seems okay. Uh, and Swamp will make all my land center untapped. <clears throat> Another planes. Yeah, one thing about Arena right now is that they just wiped everyone's accounts, and so the the competition is often not the stiffest. People are still just playing with what they have. Most people didn't instantly drop a bunch of money to have perfectly tuned standard decks. Okay, that's kind of annoying. First Strike is really difficult for my deck to deal with. Hmm. I, I am in trouble. I need to come up with something. Uh, don't really have time for this. I think we just mill both of these. Yeah, so on one hand, opponents having untuned decks is not very good if you're trying to test and come up with something super competitive yourself. But it is really good if you just want to play something silly and have it work. That said, my opponent is going to kill me very fast. Oh boy. Yeah. This game is not going to go well for me. I'll just put that out there. Hand is way too slow on the draw. For them going one, two, three with all efficient cards. Hmm. I think I have to play this. It doesn't block well, but at the very least it'll gain me life back. Uh, it'll gain me life back as I hit them. And like Vraska can kill this resplendent angel, but then she's going to die. So that's kind of blah. Opponent is kind of running out of cards, though. That happens when you curve out. Oh no! Goodbye, Blood Operative. Okay. We have not drawn very well to get out of this. Yeah, I think we gotta get rid of that angel. I was considering getting rid of Knight of Malice, just because, like, if Discovery mills us a Narc Amoeba or something, maybe we can try to block the angel for a while, but we're not blocking this profitably any more than we're blocking this. Okay, I was thinking that I could come back if my opponent had nothing, but that is not nothing. The best we can do is Dispersal to bounce the Leonin War Leader, which is, like, not close to good enough. We're still almost dead on board. Yeah, we just, we got run out of this one, and that's one of the deck's problems. It's not that fast and doesn't do high-impact things. Oh boy, hopefully we don't get beat up that bad again, though. Alright, game three. <laughs> one of the tips that came up between the games was, if your opening hand doesn't have any early plays, consider taking a mulligan, and that one cut a little deep. Uh, this hand is better. I can commit to the board earlier. I've got card advantage and the card selection card. The Merfolk Branchwalker wouldn't have saved us last game, but it would have done something. Also, we're on the play, so we're not just going to get beat up quite as bad. Uh-oh. I hope this is not the mono green deck. Oh god, it's the mono green deck. This matchup is awful, and it... Ugh, that makes it worse. This is... This matchup is why I stopped trying to figure out if I could make this deck much better. Because you just can't do anything. Every, all your creatures are three ones, and you're making Nark Amoebas and doing tiny life swings. Everything they're doing is insanely powerful compared to what you have. Like, even if I were getting a Blood Operative down here, if my opponent just plays a Steel Leaf Champion, what am I supposed to do? Uh... I guess those are fine. We really need another black source, but a fourth land is, like, kind of what we're hoping for. We can Glow Spore Shaman and Discovery. Okay, that is a better play for me. Still don't have any way to deal with a Gigantosaurus, but... Okay, so what I can do here is I can tap these to Discovery. 
I can... Hmm. Either way, I'm getting a random card, so I don't know that it super matters. So I'll just go ahead and do this. Uh, combat, attack with Branch Walker. Bullspore Shaman hoping to hit something. Uh, decline. Sweet, though. Hit. Uh, hitting the Narc Amoeba is great. Gigantosaurus, where I want to be is this. <laughs> I want to have 1-1s one -ones that can jump block forever. Okay, that is not where I want to be. This card is awful for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Oh well, it's fine. I'm going to play a giant flyer that hopefully my opponent can't beat at all. Combat. Put it for one. We are ahead in the race, and these keep you ahead in the race, which is cool. Yep, Gigantosaurus is fine. My opponent can't really attack with the Ripjaw Raptor, I'll just start throwing creatures away. Okay. Uh, I don't want to... Do I want to block? They're tapped out. Uh, whoa, no. Yeah, I'll give them a card to get this off the table. Dissolves. Okay, I am going to start paying life aggressively. Sweet. Get these out of here. Uh, I'm going to decline for now. I don't think that we're quite in the market for that yet. And I'll go one more time with Doom Whisperer. Uh, ooh. I don't think I want... Or, no, Discovery is great if I cast Dispersal and just bounce their Gigantosaurus. That seems awesome. So, yeah. Let's go ahead. Dispersal. My opponent can trade with a Glowspore Shaman, but they're still taking a million, and I've got these Creeping Chills. Oh, please don't have a Nullhide Ferox. I just thought about that. Oh, boy. I assume they would have played that instead of the Ripjaw Raptor, but... Oh. Nullhead Ferox would have been bad news for us. Alright, we're getting in for 11. Oh no, are they dead? Yeah, they needed to block. Wow, okay, I made all that complaining about this matchup, but we just... We got there. They didn't have a lot of the best cards, and it worked out. Alright, game four. <laughs> I'm still just kind of bubbling from that last game. That was awesome. Like... They missed their Steel Leaf Champion, and they didn't have Atlanta War Elves, and everything else was just good enough for us. Oof. This hand's too bad. Two basically dead cards and our lands entering tapped is... No bueno. This is better. Still has a dead card, but... Put that on the bottom. Uh, and it still also has tapped lands. This is one thing that'll get better once we have uh, the next set. Uh... Is it? We will get a breeding pool from the Simic Guild. I like seeing blue. Blue is bad against free Narc Amoebas and stuff. Okay, didn't really hit anything good, but that's fine. Really would like to stop drawing these, but hey, you put them in your deck, that's going to happen. Sometimes you draw the living end in your opener. Okay. This is cool because I'll be able to play it tapped and still get one of these down, uh, and it'll let us have our land in or untapped next turn. I'm gonna go ahead and attack. Hmm. I'm not sure which is better to go off of here. Hmm. I think Glowspore Shaman is better. It can't generate card advantage, but it's guaranteed three power and has more hits at free value, like a Creeping Chill or a Narc Amoeba. Um, I will decline. I don't want to land. Okay, now we really want to find a Surveil card. We don't have a ton of them, which is another one of the deck's problems, but we've got enough, and if we hit one, we can go up a card with the Blood Operative. Okay, opponent missing their third land drop. That's not good for them. Go ahead and I'll attack here. And I think I'll just turn up the pressure. Guaranteed three power. Get a card out of the graveyard. This is actually great, because it looks like they're a blue-red spells-type deck, and they have the 
The new Enigma Drake thing? Yeah, opponent concedes. That's rough, they didn't hit their third land, but that's how it goes sometimes. Alright, round five against uh, the Chandra Mirror. Except I'm not playing red, but that's fine. We still have basically have burn spells in our deck. Ugh. Opponent's playing a creature deck, we're just getting run out of the game. And we're on the draw. I think this is too slow. I think we need something that can impact the board. Which sucks, because our mana works and we have three lands, four spells. Ugh. Part of me really wants to keep it and try to like just find something to do, but I'm really gonna regret it if this if my opponent just says like forest land or elves. We just can't win that game ever. Opponent taking a while in their decision. Maybe their hand's iffy. Me saying that also makes me wonder, like, should I be cutting one of these for, like, a fourth Stitcher Supplier? It's really hard to find the balance of enablers to pay off in these decks. I'm gonna go ahead and mulligan, look for something better. This is better, so... Do I want another Branch Walker? Kinda do. It's another enabler, it can dig me for more lands? Like, yeah, that seems like what I want. Island. Opt. Okay. Uh, that tells us extremely little. <laughs> Just basically nothing. Overgrown Tomb, pay two life. Come on, Stitcher Supplier, hit something sweet. Well, dang. <laughs> That's not sweet. That was nothing. It's okay, we're gonna start playing Branch Walkers, get value. Okay, opponent appears to be playing the same thing as our last opponent. Uh, I would suspect that these were their only two lands and they were figuring out how they wanted to play with their opt on turn one. Uh, sweet. Yeah! That's how I like it. Perfect. Now that is a two mana play. And, like, that's what's fun about this deck. Like, my Stitcher Supplier whiffed, and my Merfolk Branchwalker hit, and to some extent that's just variance. You just need to get lucky. But if all the cards in your deck are just taking shots at variance going well, then at some point you're not getting lucky. The statistics are just evening themselves out. Let's see what my opponent does here. Goblin Electromancer. That guy's scary. Radical idea, drawing a card, okay, sure. Uh, let's just get in with these. I kind of want to save this around to sack it with our Vraska. I kind of feel the need to be applying pressure in this match. Opponent stack can do some scary things. Here, I will play the Drowned Catacomb, and I'm just going to play the Blood Operative, again, just keeping up pressure. Uh, I will get rid of my opponent's Radical Idea, because that's sweet. No jump start for you. Hmm. There was some consideration to playing the Watergrave Tap and getting down another Merfolk Branch Walker. I am almost certainly going to Vraska and kill this guy next turn. We'll see what they do, though. Gutter Snipe. Okay, I'm going to start taking a lot of damage. I probably have to Vraska that one, honestly. Yep. Lightning Strike, targeting... Yep, sure. Um, wow, they think they're in the driver's seat here, huh? Okay. I'll call. Yep, sweet. Another Narcomoeba. Alright, we don't even have to pay life for Avraska. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and get the gutter snipe off the table. Question is, do I hold back? They probably have a removal spell, so that's just wasted damage. I'm just gonna beat down. We really need to find a surveil card. Get back our blood operative. We could just really stand to generate some card advantage here. That is a scary card. Um Okay. Can't quite kill with what I have on board, which is really rough. Wow, they're not attacking Vraska? That is so aggressive. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna attack my opponent. 
Whatever. This game isn't about card advantage anymore. Okay, not a great draw. Whatever. Uh, sweet. If we hit another one of those, we win the game on the spot, which would be hilarious. Eh. <laughs> Can't get lucky every single time. But this is a cool situation where now, even if we draw a Creeping Chill, that just kills. Like, we've got three lethal attackers and uh, three lethal draws. Yeah, okay. That opponent sees they need to get the sport under control. They are almost dead. I have a lot of good draws here. Let's see. Milled one, two, three lands. That's not too many. Okay. Oh, and they just conceded. Wow. Uh, hitting that creeping chill was awesome. All right, match six? I don't really remember anymore. It's not important. What is important is that we're winning a lot with this deck, which I didn't completely expect, but is definitely welcome. Ugh, this is another one of those hands that just doesn't do enough to contribute to the board. I would have loved to draw these cards later last game, but I... We are on the play, though, so this hand is better. That might be the difference. Like, the mana is great. It all it will enter untapped now, except for Watery Grave. Oh. Okay. Forest is scary, but our opponent didn't do anything with it yet, so... Let's go ahead and discover. Uh, those are not what this game is about. Okay. So that was... bad. <laughs> yep. Branch Walker is kind of scary. And this is like the type of game why I don't like to keep these hands. Oh, never mind, it just got better. I was just going to say, if I take the turn to Notion Rain and they play a Steel Leaf Champion, uh... Then I play Vraska and kill the champion and lose her to Branchwalker, and I'm just, like, constantly so far behind. Like, those are the types of games that suck. Uh, this is better. <laughs> that card is not nearly as scary. I'm gonna go ahead and trade off here. Gets me up on life, and if I ever surveil, which I might do this turn, I could get Vraska down and eat this. She's my only removal, though. I really want to have her for something else. So, I think I'll just do this. Don't want these lands. Do I want to take action? Uh, I'll have to discard if I do that. So, or no, I wouldn't have. That was incorrect. But, oh well. Next turn we get to start playing our big scary 5 drops, which is where I want to be. If opponent plays Gigantosaurus though, it doesn't really matter. Well, if opponent plays Gigantosaurus, I can Doom Whisper. Okay, that is similarly terrifying. Cool, untapped land that doesn't hurt me. Alright, Doom Whisper, do your thing. I've got a lot of cards that are really good to mill here, and I would love to start hitting them. Okay, that is a big dumb idiot. Yeah, opponent probably doesn't super love this. Hmm. Let's go ahead and do some surveilling. Don't want these. This is one part that's a, a little annoying, is I have to keep turning down the blood operatives if I don't pick them up. Okay, we're going to need to hit a payoff. I really want to see some chills. I'm going to do one more for now. Okay. That's one hit, at least. Uh, I suppose I can use that. Hmm. And I think I'll actually take the action on this one. I think it's reasonably likely that I operative plus discover. I'm just going to go ahead and chump here, gain a lot of life off this. Go to my turn. There's another operative. I don't really want to pay the life, though, because I've got... Uh, good things to be doing. I will Discovery first. Sweet.
Big action, awesome. So that bought us a little more life cushion, as will Blood Operative. Opponent's Graveyard, get rid of their creature. I've seen some of the mono green decks playing the uh, the double green black hybrid um, that gets two creatures back. So that is a reason why Blood Operative is good, just chewing up their graveyard. Okay, they want to cast a non-creature spell. We'll see what's happening. Uh, that's really annoying. Let's see. Can I afford to start paying some life? I block here, gain three, uh, but I'm taking eight, so I'm down five. I can stay, as long as I stay to somewhat reasonable life total. Can probably do a couple more of these. Come on, payoffs. Okay, that's something. Uh, yeah, take action. Resolves. If I just chump here, I can play double blood operative to try to trade here next turn, or have two blood operatives, but it means I don't do a pump. I think I'll just block here. This isn't looking good. They had a few too many big creatures for me. And uh, the way our mills- oh god, that's brutal. The way our mills were very good last time, they've been very bad this time. And opponent's creatures are all hexproof, because that's green's color pie now, I guess. It's giant, unbeatable green creatures. <sighs> I, like, have to play the blood operative to live through the combat. I think I'm just dead. I'm just gonna call this one. This is why I thought the matchup was bad. You just- their creatures are unbeatable for your tiny little crappy creatures. To talk a little bit more about that last game, it was like the variants didn't really go with us. We didn't have great mills with our surveils, and our opponent had their big strong creatures that we couldn't really keep up with. And uh, what was it? Yeah. Oh, and the other thing was I'm gonna keep this just because of discovery, and we actually have a creature that we can get done relatively early. What was I going to say? Oh, the other thing was, they had exactly one non-creature spell. If we'd kept that Doom Whisper, if they'd had, like, fewer threats or even more... Uh, they'd have fewer threats because they had more non-creatures, or they hadn't drawn that Rabid Bite, I think we were really in that game. So, a lot of things broke just exactly wrong, and that's magic sometimes. Surveil 2. I think we want, like, one of this? Seems fine. I would have liked to find another black source for blood operative, but there's nothing on the field yet, so we might be able to take a little time. Another tap land. Oh, that card is annoying. Our deck really needs to be able to block. It's okay though. Notion rain. I don't think either of these are good enough. We really need an untapped land, especially, yeah, these. These lands are great. Okay, we'll see what they have here. This card, really irritating, because even if they play something that we want to kill with Vraska, we lose our Vraska to their Mist Cloaked Herald, which sucks. Yeah, that card pretty much just needs to go, because they can just keep piling counters on the Mist Cloaked Herald, and then we're kind of screwed. So, Vraska, gonna go ahead and eat that Deepwood Elite. The deck really probably could use some more removal. Maybe I'm supposed to cut, like, the Underrealm Liches or something like that. Problem is that removal is neither payoff nor enablers, and the deck, it's already so hard to balance those. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound, really? Okay. <laughs> That's a reference they can make with her voiceover, I guess. Okay. This creature's gonna get really big. And this deck would kill for Stinkweed Imp. I wish I could just have like a Death Touch blocker. 
I'm gonna go ahead and play this Underrealm Lich. It is a powerful blocker, and it can end the game eventually, and it will start enabling us all the time. Notion Rain gets really confusing with this card, but you get the potential to put a lot of things into your graveyard. So we can try to hit some Creeping Chills and Narc Amoebas and fun things like that. Okay, opponent's pretty disincentivized from attacking. Like, I can just eat uh, this for free. I suppose they attack with this one now. Because they can still draw a card here. This is kind of getting out of control really fast. We don't have a way to kill this in our deck, by the way. Okay, they can go ahead and do attacks, that's fine. Weird that they didn't attack with this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. It costs me four life, but it's better than taking six. I guess this gets through more damage than attacking with that one, so... Yeah, maybe I was the one who was making a mistake here. Weird. Okay. My turn. Underrealm Lich. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in my hand. That's pretty much the best way my draw step could've gone. Sweet. Hmm. Now... Do I try to really go crazy with the Notion Rain? The problem is that has the potential to lose me a lot of life, and they are threatening to punch me for lots of damage. I do have, like, chump blockers for their big creatures now, though. So, I have a lot of ways I can play this. I can Notion Rain and Glow Spore Shaman. I could Notion Rain and Blood Operative. I could even just do these, but I think I can save this for later. I think I'll be a little conservative with my life. Didn't hit anything good. Uh, decline to put a land on top of my yard. That kind of sucks, but whatever. Um, oh, I don't have double black up, so I can't play the blood operative here. That's a mistake, but whatever. Um, I want this in my hand, so but I want to look at maximum cards to mill. So I'm going to go ahead and go like this. Take the Doom Whisperer. And then take... Hmm. I might just want to, like, double blood operative next turn. No, I can't do that. I don't have enough black. I'll go ahead and take the Discovery. Oh, Discovery's kind of cool because I can Dispersal to bounce this Forerunner to shrink it back down again. Okay. Wow. This card makes things really complicated. We're in trouble, because Kumena is going to draw a lot of cards and start putting counters on things, but we're generating a lot of value in our own way, so... This could go either way, we'll see. Yep, that's fine. And this is where Narcomeba is going to be interesting. Opponent's creatures are evasive and big, but they don't fly. So I can either chump block with it, or I can start chipping in for damage. Look to close out with these, uh, creeping chills. We'll see how this goes. I, I think I'm going to lose, but I'm more in this game than I expected to be. Oh, this is really irritating. <laughs> this deck has so many triggers. Okay. Yeah, the problem is I didn't interact enough. Opponent's just going to present an unbeatable aggro draw next turn. This is sort of like the, the, uh, the mono green deck, but like with everything ratcheted up way higher. <laughs> Like, they are a synergy deck, so removal picks them apart more easily, but... Um, yeah, I'm gonna block. I want to keep some life around to work with. This is my pressure, which sucks. Maybe I'm supposed to block with Glow Spore Shaman, actually. I'm not playing reasonably conservatively here. Choose one and put it in my hand. I will choose the one that contributes to the board instead of the one that costs me a million life. Hmm... I could just Branch Walker plus Blood Operative play Overgrown Tomb tapped, but I'm just gonna die really quickly if I do that. Kinda just wanna keep developing my mana without taking too much damage. Hmm. Doom Whisperer, though, 
if I play it, I can start threatening. Like, they basically need to kill me in one turn, or I'm threatening to be able to do a lot out of nowhere. Alright, this will be my Hail Mary. Not going to Overgrown Tomb, because even though it'll let me play Branch Walker, I think it is more important that I be able to surveil an extra time. So... No attackers. I think I just need to try to live through the turn, which I believe I can do. I haven't done the math yet, but... Let's see, I think I Creeping Chilled once. No, I have not Creeping ch or no. Uh, oh yeah, because I exiled it. Okay. Wow, they're choosing to draw cards, not put counters on their guys. I don't know if that's correct. Um, yeah, this is... I'm just kind of throwing the Hail Mary here, hoping that my opponent doesn't see that I could threaten to end the game in one turn. Like, I need to get kind of lucky with what I'm milling off the Surveil and the Underrealm Lich, but I could do it. Okay, they play their land. Yep, all their creatures are massive. See what they do. Okay. Gonna go ahead and block here. I mean, maybe they have some pump spell that gives trample. I would just die. Whatever. I can't play around that in a million years. Okay. Gives me five shots with Doom Whisperer. That's a lot of cards. And I have to do these on my opponent's end step, because if I hit Narc Amoebas, I want to be able to attack with them. Okay, that's a whiff. Uh, I'm going to decline, I need all the life I can get, this is not a value blood operative game. Opponent's pausing like they have something to do. Okay, another whiff. Uh... This might not be it. This might not be the game. Still get, looks at six more cards though. Six out of 24. Uh, got two Narc Amoebas, two Creeping Chills. Come on, I suppose I'll get extra looks at um, the at the creeping chills with Underrealm Lich and still no no dice. Um, I'll get extra looks at those because creeping chill will gain me some life so I can activate this again. Okay, two more looks. Nope. Normally that's my favorite one to mill because it's a real card, but not here. Right, one more set of two. Double Narc Amoeba, come on. Ugh. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. Just not seeing my cards. Uh, put one of them into my hand. Sure, that one, I guess. Oh, it was in the next set down. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, take action, but it doesn't matter. Um, is there anything else I can do to try to push some damage? Hitting for 7, 8, 9, 10. So we really needed this to be in play so that we could try to hit two more creeping chills and win the game. Um... And I guess I get a few more mills with the Discovery as well. Uh, I don't think it's possible for us to win this game. I think even if we hit everything, we put them to one. But I want to see what we can try to do. Oh, and Under Elm Lich gives us a lot of mills with this Discovery as well. 
Um, I cannot pay for that, so... Okay, that's why they were holding their mana up. Interesting. Yep. Nope. Okay, our ch creeping chills were really hiding out on us. So, we tried. We put ourselves in a position where we needed to get a little lucky, and instead we got very unlucky. <laughs> Just kind of sad. I'm gonna go out with honor, though. <laughs> so, ah, oh, that... That would have been excellent, and instead it was just a pipe dream, alas. So I believe that is our third loss? Yeah, okay. So the deck went 4-3, and three, which was disappointing given that we started out 4-1, and one, but uh, we had some fun times along the way, so I'll take it for what it's worth.